Then I Welcome to another episode of New Orleans Dot Basketball, New Orleans Dot Network podcast. As always, I am your host Raphael Rattler, joined by my fellow middle brother, Gary Miller Rattler. How was it tonight, bro? Hey, man, it was uh, it was electric in the Smoothie King Center. I mean, the the Pels have been in this. Feels like the first of all, it feels like the Pels have played every day at home for like the past. <laughs> it's ridiculous! It's, it's ridiculous. I feel like I need to take. And pay rent at the smoothie kicks and i've been there more than i've been at my actual apartment my humble abode but it was electric in there man i mean you you had to know you know you were getting zion and jose back after a tough 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 loss and you had to know that just having those guys available uh, was going to give the crowd a different kind of energy a different kind of uh different level of, of excitement and they didn't they didn't disappoint so it was fire in there man i i enjoyed the vibes i enjoyed seeing uh, everybody kind of up in spirits. The Pelicans have been playing some really good basketball lately, and so I think the 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 obviously life and basketball and sports. We always put sports to equate to life. Uh, you know, it's ebbs and flows, man. And I think right now, Pels fans in in the city is is you know they kind of on the on the upward swing. Uh, you know, even after the loss in Minnesota, I think uh, against Minnesota, I think that they still. Uh, you know the Pelicans are playing some really good basketball, so it was it was exciting that man. It was it was electrifying. How's everything on your side? Yeah, everything is blessed. Um, the Saints couldn't hurt me this weekend, and Arkansas got no. They cannot game. can't hurt me. Cannot hurt me this weekend. No, they cannot. Yeah, but uh, before we get to uh, into the show, because it was a it was a fun one to cover today. Uh, make sure you guys follow us on Twitter. On- on X, on IG, on TikTok. That's Inno Basketball No E. Make sure you like the episode below and make sure you subscribe to the channel, New Orleans Basketball. So the Pelicans won tonight, 129-93 um, for their uh, fifth game out of their sixth game homestand. The Kings are coming off a of back-to-back. They had they were the hottest team in the league. They had won six straight uh in a row, and they had won the last two matchups first. The Pelicans last year, which were kind of like telling tales for what would happen in the play-in tournament uh, when the Kings kind of handled the Pelicans uh, under man so many players last season. But again, you're going into it with the expectation that the Pelicans are going to play like they had been playing the prior three games, even though they lost a tough one. So first and foremost, how was the blender rocket when Jose Alvarado made his debut? Yeah, it was crazy. I, I I was looking at my phone. I was tweeting and responding to a couple of text messages about the Pels, and I just heard like this loud. I knew it was like a dead ball, so like I looked <laughs> down for a split second to kind of tweet and do some things, and like I just heard this groundswell of applause and yelling, and like I immediately knew exactly what was happening. Look up, sure enough, it was Jose uh, checking in, and and listen, Jose has a you know for a undrafted role player. I mean, the amount of support and fans that he has in the Smoothie King Center, uh, anytime he does anything, right? Like, he got up off the bench, and you would think that he hit, like, the game-winning shot to put the Pels in the finals, the way they were screaming. And, of course, the Jose Chance returned. And I think, you know, just having him out there, again, he looked, you know, like a guy who hadn't played basketball all mm-hmm. season, um, you know, and he obviously hit a shot and, and things like that. But... I think just having him out there and having his energy and him being available and being on the floor for the first time in the season, uh, I think it it you know it's, I don't think it was the the single reason why the Pelicans played so well tonight, but I think it did give them a boost uh, to see him out there and to have him his his cheerleading antics to be on the floor is just a different vibe for the team. So it was good to see him out there. Yeah, we we talk about the Pelicans being a, a team made like gumbo. Jose is the root of gumbo. He is the backbone, the soul of the team, of which is base. You got all your main ingredients, but without Jose, it's not the same. And you felt that energy absolutely. Now, someone we need to apologize to is Mr. Cody Zeller. Because tonight, again, the game was out of hand. Uh, this is a matchup that favors him because – Demondis Tabonis is not that athletic, and JaVale McGee is very old. So in that scenario, this is a matchup that he could dominate, and he did. 
right? Like he's an active guy. So a team coming off a back to back after getting punched in the mouth in the first half and then the third quarter, like you need a guy who's annoying, who's getting those offensive rebounds, those second possessions. And that's why you brought in a Cody Zeller, right? Like you probably didn't want him to be your second a big off the bench, but he was made to get you through the season. Obviously, a lot of experience, uh, been around for a long time. What do you think of Cody Zeller performance tonight? Yeah, he's a, he's an innings eater. And and listen, in the first half, Willie was going heavy Jeremiah Robinson, Earl minutes, and Sabonis. You know, he he's just it, we talk about the matchups on each night is going to call for somebody different. And you know, Jeremiah Robinson Earl, who has been really good for the Pelicans in the in the role that he's been asked to play. Just wasn't his night, right? So bonus was taking advantage of him. Uh, if, if he tried to body him, he hit him with a skill move. Uh, if he backed up off of him and tried to play the, the skill move, so bonus was just backing him down right into the lane. Uh, and then don't even talk about, you know, rebounds and second chance points and things like that. And so in the second half, uh, you know, Willie said, you know, to hell with that. Uh, and with and we heavy Cody, Cody Zella minutes. And I, I think you see, what you mean by innings eater, right? Like he's no, he's not the best athlete. He's not the greatest rebounder, but he's active. And he, like you say, he annoys people because he's always in there tipping the ball and pushing the ball away. And again, when you have a guy who is not as athletic as a bonus, who, you know, Cody Zeller can lean on and, and be a, a bigger body than Jeremiah Robinson Earl, you see what he's, you know, what he gets. And he was what right on the door of a double double. If he didn't get it, did he get a rebound at the end? Um, but he was right there. He was right there for it if he didn't get it. So, um, you know, it's good. Obviously, you want to see as many guys contribute in different ways. This is how you keep guys on the end of the bench ready and fresh and prepared and, you know, and always, you know, ready to be placed in whenever their name is called. So it was good to see him get out there and kind of show his value to the team tonight. Right. Another performance that, again, we keep talking about it and the fact that you know, CJ and Trey and Jose and Najee and everybody's taking their chances and taking their, their spots, you know, missing games so far. It's really opened up Herb Jones' offensive game because, you know, the Pelicans have found something with the Herb Jones and the Dyson Daniels. Uh, Willie Green was asked after the game, like, are you going to change the start lineup? He's like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like, you would never – if you would have told me <laughs> – at some point last season, that Dyson and Herb were in the starting lineup with Zion and JV. I mean, it would it would be tough to sell me that on that on an offensive uh, from an offensive standpoint. But again, we've talked about like is the ideal spot for Dyson Daniels at some point in his career to be the starting point guard for this team because if you have two guys who could defend at that level. And Herb is scoring 18, seven and four with two blocks and a steal and shooting middies. Like that's hard to defend and that's hard to score on. So what are your thoughts on what Herb and Dyson just have been able to do as far as their offensive uh, confidence? Yeah, I, I tweet about it. I mean, give Fred, put Fred Vincent's <laughs> jersey in the rafters of the Smoothie King Center. I mean, he... Dyson and Herb, if they are going to hit, and I tweeted about this, I say consistent jump shots. Right. When I say consistent, I don't mean like they're going to knock down every jump shot. I mean that they're confident enough to say, okay, I can make this shot. I'm going to take this shot. Because when you have a, a lineup, you know, just talking about this particular lineup with Dyson and Herb, and you have Zion, Brandon Ingram, and JV, the worst defender has to go somewhere. And first of all, let me talk about uh, about Dyson because I got a lot to say about her. <laughs> Dyson and his ability to 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 take the shots and be confident in his offensive game has completely unlocked this new lineup, this new starting lineup. Because God bless trying to score on Dyson Daniels and Herb Jones. I mean, they are just everywhere. And Dyson, the Aaron Fox came in this game averaging over thirty, Garrett. Yeah. That was that was none of that. Dyson, Dyson, there was none of that. Dyson and Herb didn't. They had nothing. There was nothing they could do. Like that block, that three point shot that Herb just like. I'm like, bro, Start that's not even. That's not even fair, bro. Like I, I don't yeah. even. You know, I, that that's not fair. But Dyson, in in you know, he's a he's a prototypical point guard in a sense of he's a good passer, a good connector. But he's six eight and plays defense like. Who knows? Like they call Davion Mitchell off off day, off night. 
Well, Dyson made sure that Davion <laughs> Mitchell and De'Aaron Fox and everybody else had an off night. Dyson is 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 really growing and showing, and these minutes right now are so valuable to him because he's learning that not only does he belong on his team, but he's in the starting lineup, and he's not only I said it a, a couple pods ago, like not only is he not the reason the Pelicans are losing, but he is winning games and winning quarters for the Pelicans. Um, you know, as a as a guy who we saw struggle at the beginning with free throws. And like now he's taking three pointers. Like he's doing all kinds of stuff um, that he can do. And so I think, you know, I, it would be, I, I think Dyson was drafted to be the point guard eventually of this team. And I think, you know, he's been thrust into this lineup the same way Jordan Hawkins has been thrust into, into roles and everybody is thrust into roles. And, and that's the, been the Pelicans moniker for a while. He, you're starting to see uh, what he he doesn't need the ball to be effective, and he's perfectly fine being a defensive first guard. And I just think that that's amazing. But Herb Jones, I, Herb Jones's ascension, he is turning into a secondary playmaker, not a second option, not a not a two option, but in a pinch. Like if Brandon Ingram's doubled and Herb gets the ball with ten seconds left on the clock, I think I think everybody's okay with it. Like this. This guy's game is, is phenomenal. Like, he is one of the smartest basketball players I think I've ever watched, right? Like, I, I he just knows where people are going before they go there. He knows where that pass is going. He knows how – one of my favorite things that Herb has done this season, and, you know, obviously we talked about him being his rookie year, being one of the best floor – create, like one of the best space fillers in the in, on right. the Pelicans. These he has mastered the random cut where mm-hmm. the offense is just and here's her running down. You we know it from playing 2K where you just cut <laughs> down the middle. And if you're if the person is looking, it's gonna be open every time. And now when you have you know her out there being a tertiary player for Brandon Ingham and Zion, and then also being a secondary playmaker when one of those guys are down. And, and he is he is phenomenal at it. I, I cannot stress it how great he is playing off ball with these guys and, you know, not allowing his limitations to shoot early in his career to hold him back. And now her when her takes a shot, I mean, you're not at the point where, like, it should go in, but you're like, that's probably going to go in. Mm-hmm. I mean, if because mm-hmm. he only takes good shots. And so he, he has just been phenomenal. His defense, he is – it is going to be hard. I, I tweeted about it the last time. I think that he's going to get the we've been we've been like pushing him off from all NBA team uh, defensive first team. I think he's going to get that boost, but he may not even need it because this guy is one of the best, if not the best perimeter defenders in the entire NBA. And some of the things that he does on the defensive side of the ball, is just unfair. It wrecks games and God bless trying to trying to do it, especially trying to trying to guard this team. Especially if Herb is going to give you 18, 7, 4, 5, 6, 3 blocks, two steals, a cup of water, uh, to deliver the play. Like he's just doing everything. And I mean, it is, it has been, it has been a really beautiful kind of basketball synergy to watch Dyson and Herb just be those release the hounds on the sides uh while on on, on opposing offenses. I had this thought the other day. We're getting off track, but I had this thought the other day. If the Pelicans want to get where the Pelicans want to go and what that they think that they have the the talent and the potential to do. I think Brandon Ingram and Zion probably need to be all NBA players. And I think Herb Jones has to be a first team, all defensive player. And Herb Jones probably should be a candidate for defensive player of the year too. I think if they're trying to get there, all of those things have to happen along the way. And it looks like the, 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 the switch is starting to flip. So, We've got to talk about this. The last four games have been incredible. I know they dropped the one to the Timberwolves. Um, to be honest with you, like when Zion wasn't going to play, I'm like, Timberwolves have been playing really well. It's going to be yeah. hard to beat them. It's and- it, it, it's all, it's almost disrespectful to think, you know, and again, the Pelicans almost won that game, but it's almost, right. almost disrespectful to how well that the Timberwolves have been playing lately to think that you could lose Zion, not have CJ, not have Trey, not have Jose, and they go in there and, and assume you're going to win. Now the Pelicans right. had a chance to win um and some things Probably that won. Yeah. at the end of the game that uh just reared their ugly head once again. Um but but is it the, the Timberwolves are a really good regular season team and I, I think the Pelicans played them to about as best as they could with, with the available bodies. 
Right. So you've played four of the top, what, five teams right now in the West, and you went, what, three or one? Like, that's – that's and you're still missing C.J. McCollum. You're still miss- – it's not like when people are like, oh, everyone's got injuries. Not everyone has, like, their third and fourth best player injured at the same time. Like, it'll be, like, one person who plays five minutes a game and one person who plays 30, right? Like, you're missing a core part of your team. And to think that you went head-to-head versus them um, and really outside of the second, like, the fourth quarter, you really dominated all of them from the the games throughout, from start to finish. So, I mean, I know Denver came back because they they got Jokic, but you pretty <laughs> much dominated every quarter for these games. It's got to be on the defensive. We talk about the, this team and how defense creates everything. It creates possessions. We've been screaming about playing with pace and playing with the energy of athleticism that this roster is blessed with. And now you're seeing the stops. Now you're seeing the deflections. Like, they're holding teams to – The Sacramento Kings were the number one scoring team last year in the NBA, and they've been killing people so far this season. They just held them under 100 points. I get it. It's a back-to-back, but they've been doing it on back-to-backs too. And so, like, that was an extremely impressive performance, but all throughout, you've held teams to 109 points per game. You've had 11 blocks per game over these last four games. You had six or six blocks per game over the last four games. You've had 11 steals per game over the last four games. Like these are best in the NBA categories in each one of these things. And really, I mean, you tell me if I'm wrong. Really, I think the only thing different they did was play with energy and play with pace and play with the aggressiveness that we know that they have. And so like, when you watch the last four games, like, am I just over like or underthinking it, or have they made adjustments in places here and there that's kind of turned their switch in terms of what they need to do on the defensive end? Well, I, I think it's a combination of a bunch of things. So, number one, starting off against the Dallas game, the second Dallas game, the the one that they won, you saw a defensive change, right? You saw mm-hmm. JV match up with Derrick Jones Jr. Um, And instead of playing on Derek Lively, threw that whole pick and roll with Luka and Derek Lively off with Dyson guarding Derek Lively. And now you can't switch between Herb and Dyson. So there's a there's a commitment to being malleable on defense. Right. Not sticking with the same thing. We saw how many times we've seen JV being drop coverage over and over (laughs) and over and over again. It doesn't seem like that's a that's a you know, that that's going to be a thing this season. They're going to play different ways and and do things differently. Another thing is the attention to details. And I want to point to one possession tonight that properly explains the Pelicans when they are locked in and and paying attention to the details. The Pelicans were up like 27 points, right? At the end of the third quarter, there's like a minute left in the game. Zion is on the floor and he is, uh, it's it's a turnover. Zion comes back uh, uh, on the defensive end. They hit, uh, I think it was uh, Davion Mitchell, hit Kevin Herter uh, for like an elbow three. Now Zion is like at the, almost at the top of the key, kind of like in, just like looked at it. As the ball went, Zion dead sprinted and full on jumped to contest the Kevin Herter three, which ended in a, in a, in a missed shot. Now they up 30 in the third end of the mm-hmm. third quarter with one minute left. It could have been very easy for Zion to swing at, it, right? And again, nobody's calling Zion prime Herb Jones, <laughs> but attention to details from your stars. Being saying, you know what? No, like keep your foot on the gas, could you know, contest every shot. And I think just getting I we we talked about get behind Herb and Dyson. I mean, let Herb and Dyson do those things and play with energy behind them. Those guys have the defensive mechanics. They have the defensive IQ to do things, special things that I don't expect Brandon Ingram, Zion, and and and, uh, and JV to do. But those guys behind playing behind those guys can be uh, can be using energy, can be rotating, can be helping the helper, can be doing things. And I think you're seeing a commitment to that from the Pelicans, and it's showing. It's showing on the floor now. Second halves, you got to learn to maintain it, right? And you saw it today. They came out in the third quarter, and it must be uh, the free throws and the second half leads being dissipated. I think were are 
a focus point, you know, going uh, into you know, obviously in this practice or the shoot around or whatever the case was. We saw videos of Zion staying uh, late for free throws after the after free uh, after practice. So those guys came out in the third quarter and they were, you know, they played with, with the same intensity. They ran with the same amount of energy. Um, and I and I you see what happens when a team is locked in. So I I think you're right. I think they just, all they've done is kind of started to play with more energy. Um, they letting the defensive leaders lead them and Dyson and Herb. Um, and I think that they just p- being more attentive to the details and not giving up on 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 shots and gang rebounding things that help you win. These are the small things in, in the game. We talk about football being a game of inches. You have to win the, the 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 little things, the things that are not seen: box out, closeouts, deflections from Dyson Daniels. You have to win those things, mm-hmm. um, and then win the big win the big. Uh, the big categories as well, steals, blocks. And that's how you, you know, you win games the way you do, even with CJ McCullum out, even with Trey Murphy out, and Larry Nance out, and Jose out. This is how you win games by winning all of the hidden, the hidden yardage, what we call in the NFL, um, and, and winning those things and then, the, the, you know, paying attention to the details on the defensive end. Yeah. I think, like, again, the offense is still a little clunky. Like, there'll, there'll be times where mm-hmm. you're like, what is this? Um, but then you'll also have times where, like, man, this is beautiful. How do you do it? And again, I, it's just gonna yeah, like Brandon, like when Brandon Ingram scores 16 straight points in the third quarter and just completely puts the game out of wraps. Uh, you're gonna have nights like that, right? Like, you're gonna have nights where Zion scores 18 in one quarter and Brandon Ingram scores 18 in another because we talk about it like at any point in time, if one of them are on the court, the, the other team doesn't have a chance to break, doesn't have a oh, okay, Luca just sat down, like that doesn't exist. You know, as long as you have predatory wins. So you see those things, you see the connectivity on defense, like they're helping each other. They're knowing their personnel, right? Like not closing out to non-shooters. Like there's been so many times in the past couple of years where the Pelicans would close out on like JaVale McGee at the three-point line. Like he was about to let it fly. Knowing with your personnel and helping where the, now I wish there would have been more help on cat at the end of that game. But outside of that, they've been playing together both on the offensive end, the ball's been moving, the assists been high, things like that. Now we talk about assists. I need you to talk a little bit about your claim that the Pelicans have the best stable of shooters this side of San Francisco. Now to back up your point, Jordan Hawkins, he's third in the NBA for rookie scoring. He has the most three pointers made in NBA history through this amount of games. He's tied for 17th in the NBA and three-pointers made. And this guy is not like a starter or your best player or second best player or third best player or fourth best player or fifth best player. That's where he's at. CJ McCollum, was he's a career 40% three-point shooter who is on his way to having a really good start to this season. Matt Ryan is shooting 47% from three. And it's not all a small amount. We just talked about what Jordan Hawkins has been able to do in terms of his three-pointers made. Matt Ryan's only made five less. He's made 32 already this season, 28th most in the NBA. Then you got Trey Murphy, who at the end of last season had the third most three-pointers in the NBA other than Stephen Clay in the last two months of the season. I need you to back up your claim of the Pelicans may have found them some guys to play around. Brandon Ingram is that way. Yeah, I, 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 I have – Somebody has to tell me <laughs> the stable of shooters that is better than the Pelicans when every when this team gets healthy, right? When Trey Murphy and CJ get back, when you talk about Jordan Hawkins and Trey Murphy and CJ and Matt Ryan, and I don't know if you watched tonight, but Brandon Ingram had the catch and shoot badge on, on <laughs> Hall of Fame tonight. I don't know if I don't know if you watched it. I don't know if you watched it. Um, but I, I I'm just there. There are just. And it, it, it just, can you imagine, look where we are, Raph. Like, <laughs> could you imagine this conversation being had, like, in the summer? Like, the Pelicans have the best stable of shooters outside of San Francisco. And really, I don't know if you watch Klay Thompson, it ain't great. So, start, you know, we'll see. But but I, I just think there's so many, and, it's, and, and they all have different other things that they do great, right? Like, Jordan Hawkins is a phenomenal rebounder as a guard. Mm-hmm. I don't know. What when he got that, that kind of thing, thing? Like he was always aggressive. He is a he's a phenomenal rebounder. Trey at six ten can do a lot of things, whether it's dribbling, whether it's whether it's shooting, doing a lot of things. Matt Ryan needs about 
this this <laughs> much space to get a shot off at any point in time. And but and I've called him the game breaker because it seems like he gets in, and before you know it, he has four threes, <laughs> and like the lead goes from seven to twenty one, and you're like, what the hell just happened? How did they, how did we get here without Zion on the floor? And it's because Matt Ryan hit four straight threes. Like CJ McCollum was on a season long up until he got hurt heater where he just was knocking down everything. Like there's just so many different guys to give you so many different things. And really when this team gets healthy and if, if, you know, obviously it's an 82 game season, you want to have everybody playing um, and you're going to need everybody. The Pelicans could have two elite shooters on the floor at all times. And that is something very scary to think about when you know you have to build a wall for Zion. You have to guard JV. Brandon Ingram, God bless whoever you have guarding that guy. Like, you you have to guard all of these different things. And, oh, by the way, Jordan Hawkins and Trey Murphy is on each side. Uh, Matt Ryan and CJ McCollum are each on the other side. And it's just... I, you're, somebody's going to have to tell me and, and give me the stable of shooters that is better than C.J. McCollum, Trey Murphy, Jordan Hawkins, Matt Ryan, and Brandon Ingram when he has it going. You're, you're just, you're just going to have to show me. Yeah, I mean, again, it's it's awesome to see Brandon Ingram just trust it. And, like, uh, in, in some ways, C.J. McCollum is, like, the prime example for Brandon Ingram because early in C.J.'s career, he wasn't shooting threes like that. He was the midi king. And he, as his career went on, he shot more and more threes. I remember when he first got to New Orleans, he was like, I told Brandon, you need to add this. It's just a part of the game that will make you that much deadly. And he talked about it after last last game about adding the three-pointer to, to his game and just taking the times and letting him come to it. And tonight, he it wasn't like he was letting him come to it. He was hunting the three-point a little bit. And like for a guy who's so good at shooting mid-range shot, you would think, that this would be easy for him to adopt, and you're starting to see those things as well. So we got to give some credit to the big fella, JV. This man. Yes. 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 Just went up against Nikola Jokic, Rudy Gobert, and Damanis Sabonis, all all all-stars, all NBA players, and some some credit. The first game, he had 22 and eight, three block, or three assists in the block. Second game, 26 points, 11 rebounds, three assists, three blocks. Tonight, this man almost had a triple-double. He had 10 points, 13 rebounds, seven assists, and three blocks. I mean, Willie Green talked about this, that to be honest, JV has probably had to make the biggest adjustments of everyone because he was always the first or second, sometimes third option. Now he's like (laughs) option six. Or seven when everyone's fully healthy. But I think, again, we the Pelicans have been doing him a disservice because the moments when he's in, there's going to be advantages. We always talk about that. There's not very many people in the NBA that can guard JV one-on-one. That's why you see them often bring a double. So when he's in and he has the matchup, guess where the ball should be going? And to his credit, because in the past, like we've talked about, there have been times he hasn't been aggressive enough. Like, the, the guy, you got to guard him. Go kill him, Jay. If you don't pass it out, right? And you're seeing him react a little bit faster. That's the other thing. He's catching the ball in the post, either letting the play develop around it, and he's going right away. Before, in previous years, like, he would catch the ball and, like, wait till the double team got there and get a turnover or something like that. He's playing faster. He's shooting the three without pump faking eight times. He's doing the things <laughs> that the team is asking him to do. I talked about it two years ago. JV, the likelihood of JV getting like more athletic was extremely low as he got older and older. <laughs> so instead of doing that, lean into the prototypical big, the Brooke Lopez. I shoot threes. I'm 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 a, a defensive impact when I'm near the rim. I'm bought in and I'm gonna pick my spots to be aggressive. And you see him buying into that. So while this time of CJ and and Trey being out has helped guys like Dyson and Hawk and Hawk and and Herb. This has helped JV to be like, look, when those guys get back, when you touch the ball and got a guard on you, you probably should go at him and things like that. So what have you seen from the big fella who's been a model of consistency so far this season? JV is, you know, we throw this word around professional. We throw that word around a lot. And I mean, you know, he takes a lot of flack. And listen, you know, there's no secret that we've talked about, you know, is JV the right center 
for this team uh, because, but, but the reason why, it wasn't because of his talent. It was because of how the Pelicans were using him or not using him um, was, was the question. Well, now, you know, with so many people having to be out and things, you know, JV is finding his worth and the Pelicans are finding JV's worth. Um, and they're, they're, they're making sure that he gets touches and he's making sure that he's capitalizing on those touches. I mean, the, the, the Timberwolves game is difficult as the, 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 the Timberwolves have a unique pairing between Gobert and Cat that is difficult for JV to guard, right? We saw a lot of times JV uh, up on a pick and roll because they run a, a weird pick and roll between Cat mm-hmm. and Gobert where you have to step up on Cat because he's a great shooter. And if you do, Rudy Gobert's at the rim. And so it was it was difficult for JV to, to maneuver that. But that's a unique challenge that the, the Timberwolves have. But he still held his own. Like, he still held his own. And you didn't feel like JV's defense was the reason the Pelicans lost because he's contributing in so many different other ways. And listen, he's a he's a I, I call him he's a Lithuania basketball deity. I mean, he is a basketball god in his country, and he 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 wears that badge of honor of of of, of playing. They asked him about it, like playing with with for his country all the time, and. And he wears that like as a badge. And so he's a guy that like he wants to be on the floor. He wants to contribute. He wants to feel like he's, you know, a part of the reason the Pelicans are winning. And when you feature him, he plays so much harder on every other in every other aspect. He's on the boards more. He's communicating in defense more. He's not, you know, not pouting, but running back because he knows he's not going to get the ball. He's sprinting back. Right. He's taking those shots early and, and he just feels a part of it. And. The thing about JV being a part of it is that it's probably a good idea because mm-hmm. JV is going to have a mismatch. Even we we saw him take it to Nikola Jokic. Even Nikola Jokic, one of the greatest players we've ever seen in our lives, could do nothing with JV. Mm-hmm. And again, JV is five in your in your rotation order as talking about pecking order on offense, four or five on a, on a good day. So I think you know JV's. Ability to 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 contribute in all of those different ways has actually helped his defensive impact. Mm-hmm. I think he feels more inclined to do things, and now you're starting to see him get blocks. You're starting to see him contest shots at the rim, make it difficult for other guys and other big men. Um, and I just think that the Pelicans are blessed to have a guy like JV who just comes to work, does his work, never complains, never talks about not being featured enough, never talks about not people missing games. Not and he's always out there. The model of consistency, and I don't think you know you've been so spoiled. It's, he's he's kind of like it's kind of like Drew Brees, and I don't mean to be like uh, kind of like put them on the same level, but like you you saw Drew Brees play play game in and play out, and even when he got older, you were like, oh, okay, well, you you start to take him for granted mm-hmm. a little bit. And then Drew Brees leaves, and you're like, "Oh, this is what other quarterbacks look like." And 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 I think JV is very similar to that. That I think you get a little spoiled with his his consistency, and you're like, "Well, the ten and ten he gave the Pelicans is good, but like that could be so much better." And then like you look around the league, and you see some of the way like these other centers are played off the floor and not able to contribute. And you could be in a lot worse situation than Jonas Valanciunas. So, uh, big shout out to JV for being so professional um, and coming to, and bringing it every single night. And I mean, he has been phenomenal this season. Yeah. So the Pelicans are seven and seven. And again, you still don't know what this team is. It seems like they're starting to find their identity and just adding more and more of those ingredients back to the pot. But you know, the Kings are going to come back, right? They just got embarrassed a little bit, absolutely, uh, versus a Western Conference foe, and you. Get to play him again in two days. What do you prepare for going into that rematch, knowing that the Kings are going to try to punch you in the mouth? They're going to attack JV. De'Aaron Fox had a off game for his standards. I mean, for anybody's standards. Harrison Barnes led the team with 16. So, um, you know, he had an off game again, back-to-back. He's going to be way more. I mean, De'Aaron Fox has been on a freaking heater Mm -hmm. this season, and he is going to come out ready to, to get downhill and play with some of that speed. Um, so, you know, be ready for the JV pick and rolls and, and attacking those. Um, I think that they're also going to shoot better, right? Mm-hmm. Like this is a pretty decent shooting team between Malik Monk, Kevin Herter, Keegan Murray, even De'Aaron Fox has been making threes this season. They're going to shoot a lot better. Like you're not going to have the same kind of shooting splits that you saw tonight. So be ready to withstand that. Um, but I do think like the Pelicans are just a really bad matchup for mm-hmm. the Kings because, you know, when, when, you know, they're playing the, the NASCAR fast pace, 
Zion and JV are just, get, get, you know, running downhill over and over again. And I think, you know, we saw Zion in that second quarter, end of that second quarter kind of be like, oh, wait, so Sabonis so is the biggest guy <laughs> on your team? Okay. And then they put JaVale out there and Zion was like, wait, really? Like, this is the options? And when you start a front court of Harrison Barnes, Keegan Murray, and, and Sabonis, you're not going to have a lot of rim protection, very yeah. similar to the Pelicans. And so, you know, the, the difference is they play with speed. The Pelicans got a lot of power uh, in, their, in their, you know, in their ball handlers and the guy, their primary scorer. So I think the Pelicans are still going to be a – they're, they're, they're not going to get any bigger. The teams are not <laughs> going to get any bigger over, you know, from now to Wednesday. So I think the Pelicans still, you know, if they continue to get stay with their game plan of, of dominating the paint – Two feet in the paint on every every possession, uh, beating them up on the boards. Right, Sabonis gets his boards, but JV and Zion can just push people out the way. I think the the, the Pels just are a bad matchup for the Kings when they're healthy like this. And so um, I expect another good game from the Pelicans. I expect another big big game uh, from Zion, but it's going to be a much closer game come Wednesday uh, in the Smoothie King Center. I think so as well. But just like with any game. I think the Pelicans bring their defensive activity. They got a good shot to win. So that's all we got left for you today. What you got left for the people, Garrett? As always, you never know what people are going through, so give someone a smile today. Uh, the Pels are in the midst of maybe finding some things out, so we're going to be coming at you more and more, uh, hopefully, as they continue to, to, to stack some wins together um, and, and get you know on the right side. Get, get, some, get some wins in, man. Get, get, separate yourself from that 500 level. Um, you know, while everybody's, you know, still while Zion and Brandon Ingram figuring these this this offensive groove out, you know, continue to stack these wins and continue to get behind Herb Jones and Dyson Dames defensively. And the Pels, you know, the Pels are figuring some things out, man. They, they definitely are. So um, follow myself at Garrick underscore Rattler. Follow my brother at Raphael underscore Rattler. Follow the page at No Basketball No E on X. Instagram, wherever you get your social medias. Uh, most importantly, subscribe to New Orleans Basketball, and we'll see you in the next one. Hey, Venom.